We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. That just seemed like absolutely a, a, an immense step from where we were that day. You know, we were frequently back in those days watching vehicles blow up. You know, it was like about every third vehicle didn't make it. Everybody was required to work at least 56 hours a week. And if you didn't do it, you had to get a note. The note had to be from the doctor, somebody's dying. In 1969, the United States made history when it landed two men on the moon that brought them back safely. It took roughly 400,000 people working behind the scenes to make it happen. And I took the civil service test for a clerk steno, passed, and went to work for NASA in December of 1965. But there was something about Cape Canaveral on the news every evening, and I wanted very much to be a part of that and felt like that I could be. So there was an opportunity to come uh, to Florida to go uh, to school. This company, Rocketdyne, when they came out interviewing, they kind of looked for farm boys with engineering degrees. And so I fit the bill. The Apollo program didn't just break new ground for science and technology, it helped break down racial barriers too. It changed my life because of the fact it made me a better person than who I am. Uh, I, I finally got a job that I was comfortable in. Workers came from all over the world, innovating in a way that had never been seen before. Now, many have come together to tell their stories as we follow the space program from its humble beginnings to the ultimate goal, putting humans on the moon. These are their stories. These are the people of Apollo.